If you've been catching house sparrows with a nest box trap and you've been feeling overwhelmed because you can't keep up with the volume of house sparrows coming to your yard, then it might be time to consider a repeating elevator trap. The elevator trap and funnel trap are both popular alternatives that allow you to capture more than one invasive house sparrow at a time. And for anyone who's just stumbled on this video, not having a lot of context here, and you're wondering why on earth would anyone want to catch house sparrows? Well, in North America, house sparrows are an introduced species that have become invasive. The word invasive can be thrown around a lot, and a lot of people can disregard that as just a buzzword, but there's a lot of meaning behind it. When it comes to house sparrows, they're not only invasive because uh, they just proliferated out of control, but they also regularly fatally attack our native songbirds. These are mostly native cavity nesting birds. So these include chickadees, bluebirds, tree swallows, and purple martins, just to name a few. These fatal attacks paired with other ecological pressures led to a decline in some of our native songbird species. And this is why we backyard bird hosts have become conservationists too. And that also means controlling the population of these invasive species in order for not only our native songbirds to thrive, but for our whole local ecosystem to function properly. Sadly, in their native lands though, house sparrow populations are struggling. Anyway, I, I need to get back on track with this. So in this episode, I'm explaining what a repeating elevator trap is, how it works, some safety aspects, and just anything else I can think of, which I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> So let's get into it. Um, when it comes to house sparrow traps, the most common and probably most essential, I'd say, is the Van Ert trap, which, um, which is this right here. So um, the Van Ert trap is a live nest box trap and it's easily placed into nest boxes. There's usually, um, we insert two screws into a nest box and then they clip right on. And the way it works is um, this, Part that I just folded over will cover the hole and so if a bird hops in it springs the trap and the hole is blocked so it can't get out but it is a live trap which is good so no no birds are harmed and that's exactly what we want we want live traps because you know these things aren't selective so we could get a native species too which is also why <laughs> there's so many safety aspects to this too that we want to really consider I actually have two videos about this trap actually maybe three <laughs> um, one is all about tips for using it and the other is about important safety precautions when using it I also have one about how to install it but the big thing about this trap is that you can only catch one at a time sometimes you're lucky and you can get to it once if, if both go in and the trap springs but usually though you're just going to get one and then you have to pull the bird out deal with it however you decide and then reset the trap you have a massive house sparrow population the van ert trap alone will be a slow process the repeating trap the repeating elevator trap solves this and the way it works is that there's an area where you bait with food and and then part of that area has a weighted trap door when the house sparrow crosses over to the other baited area or or tries the trapdoor or elevator drops into a lower chamber where a cage is you can kind of see that here once in the lower chamber there's a mesh gate I guess we'll call it and the bird can push through with very little effort and then it's released into that cage area or holding area and that's really it the elevator then resets itself because the bird's weight is no longer holding it down so it just bounces right back up and it's ready to catch another one. You can find these traps at sparrowtraps.net. You can also make them yourself. And I found a two part video on YouTube about how to make one. So I'll link that in the description. Hopefully they don't mind uh, that I'm pushing you over there, but it's, it's a great video. There are a few very important things about this trap that you absolutely need to know when using one. First, you have to monitor this trap frequently. I mean, check every 30 minutes, even every 15 minutes. Native birds can get stuck in here too, and then they need immediately released. On that note, when you check it, you need to check for blind spots. The area where the elevator lowers, and this, this spot right here, by the entrance, that's a blind spot. It's very hard to see just on a, on a quick glance. Some things to notice is if the lever is down and hasn't popped back up, if so, a bird is trapped in the elevator and it hasn't emerged into that cage area. The next important thing is stress and injuries that can happen while in the holding area of the cage. 
a bird gets really stressed out and their survival instinct kicks in and they're gonna try really hard to push through the mesh of the cage. So just kind of showing how this would look is if this is the sparrow's beak right here and I mean, they're in the holding cage area, but we'll just, for ease, um, we'll just go right here. They're pushing through and they're trying to get through. And what happens is they get these little injuries. It starts to, you know, kind of push away the feathers and the skin away from their beak. Um, and, and then they, like, especially within an hour, they start getting sores. This is just really awful to see and even more terrible if it's happening to a native bird. Like even a cardinal has gotten in here before. So that goes back to why it's so critical to monitor these traps. Baiting the trap with the right food will also help spare you some accidents as far as catching native birds. You can bait with bread, popcorn, or those goldfish crackers. These items seem to attract house sparrows more than they would attract your native birds. Um, but I will say that even with this, I've gotten the occasional Carolina wren and junk eye, junk eye, junko <laughs> in this trap. The next critical thing is always, 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 always disengage your trap when you are not able to monitor. And this includes always disengaging at night. Don't assume that since birds aren't active at night or as active at night that it's okay to leave the trap set. Mice especially can get into it overnight. So disengaging is really easy. To disengage the trap, all you're doing is fastening the elevator to the top mesh here. A lot of people use twist eyes or I use a pipe cleaner. And so you just kind of, you know, needle that pipe cleaner into both meshes here and then go back up and twist it. And then once it's fastened to the top, it won't be able to go down, if that makes sense. Just use a twist tie. Um, make sure the metal isn't brittle on whatever you're using and won't break easily. I replace mine every so often. I also don't use twist ties. I use the pipe cleaners, like I said, but it's the same idea. And you can use whatever makes sense along those lines, just as long as it keeps the elevator from triggering or lowering. Another hack for me, because life is just so busy, <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll set reminders to disengage the trap when I'm using them. Life just gets kind of away from me sometimes. So, and maybe for you, you suddenly run an errand or um, you get a phone call or something like that. I don't know. But the point is um, what you can do is set a calendar reminder, whatever it takes to just help you remember to deactivate or monitor the trap or disengage it when you're not monitoring. So I always just set an end of day reminder traps. That's all it says. And I know to go disengage my traps. Providing food and water is also a really important thing when using these traps. And what a lot of people use is canned, ooh, canned tuna, um, like canned tuna, canned tuna cans, I guess. Um, and they clean them out and they put food and water into each of those. You can also set bread in the cage, but I'd only put a little bit in there because again, other creatures, especially at night, will be trying to get in and get that food. And then for shelter, a lot of people will just put Pringles cans inside the cage. And some has, have fixed like these nice wooden boxes as shelters or mailboxes um, clipped to them as shelters. Just remember that those shelters become blind spots. So you wanna make sure you're checking those and rechecking your trap all the time. Something you can do to make monitoring easier is set a blink camera out. I, I mean, you can use any kind of motion sensor camera, but blinks are the ones that I recommend most because the outdoor model is weatherproof, um, it's mobile, it has a decent battery life, and it's just so easy to use. I have some videos on that camera and I'll also put a link in the description of where to find them. Um, but but they're, they're just really great and really helpful and you can kind of keep an eye on things really easily. One thing I do want to say about the blink cameras is they're not always great about monitoring those blink spots, or blink spots, blind spots. So you do want to definitely check those regularly, but it will tell you if something got into the trap. And so, you know, okay, well, I've got a house sparrow or I've got a native bird and I need to release it. The times where the blink cameras start to fail is if you already have one house sparrow in the trap and you're just kind of leaving it open for other house sparrows, then your camera's gonna go crazy. So at that point, I just turn the notifications off and manually check after that. And I, again, very regularly. So it's up to you on whether you wanna do the blink camera thing, but it can help at least for the initial, um, initial catch and making sure that you haven't caught anything that needs immediately released. Finally, the last really, really, really important thing you should know when using these traps is how to correctly identify a house sparrow. 
Other native birds, including native sparrows, get stuck in these traps and they need immediately released. I can't stress that enough. And the challenge with these birds is that when you're first starting out, all the little brown birds start to look really similar. I have a video about identifying house sparrows versus other, other little brown birds. You don't have to know what all the different birds, oh, you don't have to know what all the different birds are. You just have to know the combined markings of a house sparrow so that you can really quickly and easily rule it out or no, that's exactly what you have. And that video tells you exactly how to do that. Plus I have a little quiz in there too, to test you. And I'll link that in the description as well. I would absolutely recommend you watch that before you get started with uh, repeating elevator traps or trapping in general. Um, just make it mandatory actually. Uh, don't assume you know. If you're ever unsure, ask. There's several Facebook groups out there that are very helpful. Some people in the groups may yell at you and say you shouldn't trap if you don't know how to identify a house sparrow. And they're not wrong, um, but sometimes it takes life experience and application, you know? Um, it's kind of like the difference between reading something in a textbook and then actually putting that concept into practice. So I wish people would have a little grace towards anyone starting out. Um, it's just that people are so afraid of native birds being accidentally euthanized and it, it gets everyone really passionate and I totally understand that. Every time I see a post, you know, and oh, is this a house sparrow? And really it's a white-throated sparrow. Everybody is very worried that somebody's going to dispose of it. So people answer these questions very quickly, but um, again, critical, you know, the, the answer, critical, you know, what a house sparrow is and the, and then tells ask and, um, and then be prepared to release. Always just be prepared to release. Also, try to take very, very clear pictures when you are asking, especially of the head, uh, the breast, um, all of that when you're asking what kind of bird this is. And, and if ever in doubt, it's safer to release. 